So, I'm on the trail. And so, I didn't really do much of this yesterday, so I'm going to be doing a lot of this today. Running my half marathon tomorrow. And, yeah, it's going to be active after. Yesterday was the only day it wasn't. Like, well, not counting the day of me getting here. It wasn't really active then. But we're going to be active pretty much for the remainder of the trip, though. So I kind of wanted to show you what this looks like. It's really pretty. I'm the only car here, so that's nice. Yeah. I'm not going to try to run this because they actually recommended not to do it because this is very, a lot of routes, a lot of routes. So this is one where you walk, but I do have a couple other trails I'm going to visit before I go pack up my packet where, where I can actually maybe run. This just isn't one of them. <laughs> um, so thanks to my Airbnb, they gave me recommendations on where to go. Um, also too, I, I looked it up too. So it was a little combination of one, two punch. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a couple more of those and then I'm going to go home or go back to the Airbnb shower immediately because there are ticks here. Um, but honestly, if you're someone who does trail running and are in the woods a lot, like I used to be, haven't been lately, you kind of know that. Um, but they're not the same. I don't think they're the same ticks as there are in the Midwest. So they're not deer ticks or like, um, I forgot which ones they are, but it's a thing. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to keep moving so that it's less likely of me having ticks. Anyway, bye now. So this place is a wonderland. It's actually kind of dope. I've been trying to just kind of do it for exercise, but I wish I wouldn't have been, because I've been missing out on things. Like, look at this. Look how pretty that is. I mean, it's like this everywhere. And then you even have this going on too. It's so dope. I almost want to take a picture. I might do that actually. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And I am still in um, Ellsworth, um, well, Ellsworth slash um, Bar Harbor, Arcadia region of Maine. <laughs> um, it has been day three. And so I kind of think I went over things a little bit yesterday. To recap yesterday, even further though, sorry, I'm kind of, yeah. Um, Yesterday was fun. Um, I did not do as much as I would like. And I've already come to terms with this trip was not going to be the same as a lot of my trips. I do this vacation trip because I wasn't totally on vacation. Like I had to work yesterday and today a little bit. And um, <clears throat> so I kind of was limited on my time. And But this part of the trip wasn't really the main trip that I was really planning on. The trip that I... I'm putting all my energy into and really, really care the most about is once I get past, once I do this half marathon, it's actually the half marathon itself, number one. And then after that, then going to Portland, Maine. Cause Portland, that is why I want to experience without like non pandemic Portland. Um, because the naturey stuff, I already know it's better. <laughs> It's going to be better when there's less people around because you could truly enjoy it. 
and you don't feel rushed and you can actually get to places a lot quicker. So it's a lot different. And so I already kind of got to experience that the first time I've been in the main. So for those who weren't aware, um, who haven't seen my other days that I've put together, um, cause I am going to do them by days. Um, I last time I was in Maine and last time I was in both areas was, um, in 2020. Um, it was <laughs> unpopular, but it was like in November, October, November of 2020. I'll be honest. I was losing it. I'm someone who does not stay put. And so it was getting to me that I was not traveling. So I finally was like, you know what? I'm going to go somewhere where the restrictions are not as crazy. Um, because originally the plan was I was actually originally going to go to Vermont. So Maine, I discovered Maine by accident. I ain't going to hold you. <laughs> and it's because I was originally going to go to Vermont. And then when... um during that time, Vermont's restrictions, you had to quarantine in the hotel for a week and then be out and about because they weren't playing any games. Their numbers were low. They kind of stayed low and they just weren't playing any games. Maine also had low numbers too, but they were just less strict. Um, you basically had to make sure you took a test right before you got there and then quarantine for like two days. I was like, that's fine. We'll just plan eight. <laughs> you know, that way we get like about a week in. And honestly, because it was just the two of us who were, and we already, you know, this is like the person I was dating at the time. We already were like, we were vaccinated. We were ready to go. We, we were, we were rule followers. So we were trying to, you know, basically be able to still have fun, but just safely. That was it. And so when we went to Maine, we had time. It was a good time. Um, there's parts that wasn't fun, but I think a lot of it had to do with my partner and I just not getting along. But outside of that, it was a good trip. And I was like, you know what? I want to try this again, but just I want to see what it looks like differently. So, um, yeah, so I did. That's what we did. Um, what was I going to say? So anyway, today, um, so yesterday I did end up going to a brewery. I, I was supposed to go to two. The second one, once I looked around and looked at the crowd, I was like, yeah, I'm going to pass on that. Um, because what I will say, especially for those who are melanated, um, I mean, I'm probably saying the obvious, but like you stick out like a sore f thumb around here. Okay. There's not that many of us. <laughs> um, and it's a different vibe. And Maine as a whole, as a state, um, politically, they are like truly purple. But you do still see the extremes. And <laughs> I just know, I, I, maybe I'm just using my discernment very well. But like considering the fact that the debate just happened, the presidential debate just happened for those who are in the, who, those who, okay, so for, Anyone who's watching this from the United States, we had our presidential debate and it's very contentious for those. And I'm pretty sure y'all know that already. So I don't want to run into any situations, especially at the end of the day, I am here by myself. So anytime where I think a situation might be, I have a feeling that ain't it, we're going to just... <laughs> go on to the next place. And that's what I did for the second brewery. So I did not go to the second brewery, but I did go to one of them. And this one brewery was amazing. I actually ended up staying there way longer than I was originally planned because I just had a good time. I met one of the, I met one of the people who helps brew there. Um, he also happens to be in the city council. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how this happens. And he's also in a band. And I'm just like, how are you doing all these things? He's like, this is kind of a small town within Ming. So I mean, it's not that hard. I'm like, okay. Um, and one thing about it, two things for sure. If it's truly like a brewery, brewery experience, typically my experience with it is you're usually going to find more moderate to liberal people that go to breweries especially the ones who are doing the brewing. Um, because you just kind of are a little bit on the alternative side. 
Um, and I'm a, and even though aesthetically I don't always look like I'm alternative, I'm an alternative girl. So, and those are like the people I hang out with in general. So like, I'm like, okay, I, I saw this. I was like, this feels safe. We're going to be here. And so we we're here for a minute and I actually ended up trying some things and it was good. And, um, I took, I'm taking some home. So yeah. Um, I think I brought a sour that's been aged since the pandemic. It's good, but I guess my friends will find out how good it is because we're going to just try it out. Okay. From there, then I ended up going to another place um, that was actually across the street from the other brewery. It was the Irish pub. And at this point, I just wanted to get food. And because this is a smaller town, plate things do not stay open past nine. So I'm even kind of watching the clock right now to make sure I get dinner in decent time. Because the thing that's tricky is I live in central time and this is Eastern time. So you would think that our difference isn't a big deal. But for me, it is because I'm kind of a schedule kind of girl um, for the most part. And I usually have a tendency of sometimes eating later anyway, because I'm also in a major city. In a major city, you you can do that. You can be like, oh, crap, I should probably eat something. And it's like nine o'clock. I don't do it often, but I mean, you can do that, you know, especially if you're on vacation. So I'm just trying to be mindful and aware of that. And so that's kind of the other thing, too. It was like, OK, I need to pay attention. So. Um, that's another reason why some of the things I had planned, I had a whole entire list of things, of ideas of things to do, but I had to cut it down by quite a bit because I was like, I don't even have time to do all that, which is okay. I mean, a, a lot of stuff is nature stuff, so it's not going anywhere, you know, <laughs> for the most part. I, at least I hope so. So anyway, um, yeah, so that's kind of what happened yesterday. Um, I went to a, the pub and they, I just had like some a black and chicken salad and, um, kale chips. And a beer. Yeah. Um, I kept it cute. And after that, then I talked a little bit longer. And then I went home. And I was in bed by, I think, 1045 Eastern time. So, and I was knocked out. And, oh, I will say this. I've had the best sleep. Like, I think the last time I slept this good was when I was in Puerto Rico. But I don't even think I slept that good in Puerto Rico all the way because my allergies were killing me. Whatever the air is up here, because I mean, I'm up here, I don't have the allergens that, I don't have the allergens here that I have back home. I mean, I still have some allergies because you can kind of hear my voice, but like, it's not unbearable like it would be at home. Like right now, if I was at home, I feel like my hay fever would be kicking in because the fall... <laughs> the transition from the summer to the fall breathing wise kicks my behind. Um, especially the closer I am to the lake. Cause I think most of the allergens that I'm allergic to are actually closer to the lake for me. So that's another thing I'm going to need to consider whenever I do move again on how close to the lake I want to be for that reason. Also, because man, <laughs> the way breathing doesn't really happen the way I want it to. And during this time of the year, <laughs> anyway, so I slept really good, woke up this morning, kind of took my time, um, worked a little bit. Then I went to the coffee shop. Oh, the coffee shop I went to, I went both both days, amazing. In the downtown of Ellsworth, very, very good. I'll post it here. It's good. Um, yesterday I had the matcha, um, like a large matcha. So I have some of that left over and I kind of did that on purpose because I'm going to drink some of that for race morning. Um, so tomorrow morning, um, a large masha with, um, I also add like vanilla syrup to it, um, and matcha latte. And I had, uh, breakfast sandwich with like, um, vegetable, um, veggie sausage. Cause you already know I try to be still not eat the meat. Um, <clears throat> And then I also had avocado toast. And then today I went back and had like a latte and their avocado toast. And I will say this, their matcha is better. I, I did not, I don't like their blend that they use for their espresso. It's just not for me. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it just, yeah. And I could taste it even through me getting it through a latte. So 
Yeah. And it could be just the water here, because, like, the water here does taste significantly different. Um, I didn't really notice that the water tastes different until I actually was at the brewery and had their water. I was like, ooh. Because <laughs> I've been drinking Fiji, like, the whole entire time. I've been drinking bottled water the whole time. So I'm like, I don't know. But, yeah. Just because I don't like chancing the idea of, you know, I just don't do that. I try not to anyway. But anyway, so after that, then I went off on my hike. And then you saw the video of the hike. Um, and I'll post it right here. Okay. After that, then I went out to lunch. <laughs> and then you're, you're going to see all of what I did at lunch. And I was at Bar Harbor, by the way. Because before I went to lunch, I actually had to go to Bar Harbor anyway to get my packet. And by the way, I should probably start looking at this stuff and get it together for tomorrow morning. Um, oh, I have a little bit of a visitor's guide. It's too bad I'm not going to be around that long. Yeah. Because my checkout time, I did have my checkout time extended, but I don't think I'm going to use it. I think actually I'm going to check out the time I'm supposed to check out. Um, I'll only use it if I absolutely need to, but... Oh, so this is where I end up going to. Let me see if I can switch this around. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Clearly it looks like I couldn't switch. So this is where I went for lunch. I imagine at dinner time it probably looks amazing. But again, I wanted to get closer to home. Did not want to be far away. Because from where I'm staying at is actually about... I want to say it's about 30 minutes from where I'm at. So I just didn't want to have to drive that far. Um, yeah. Uh, also, too, the food here and stuff is just as good. Like, I had, like, a pizza that they had at the brewery, like a pizza pizza. I forgot to mention that yesterday. And that was pretty good, too. But I just didn't want to do that either. I kind of don't really want to do pizza, if that makes any sense at all. But... Yeah, so the race is tomorrow. But anyway, that was this is one of the things that came in the packet. Don't mind my suitcase. <laughs> oh, and then I got this thing. So, and this is sponsored by the YMCA. And um, I won't be using this, but this is, maybe someone else can use it, but I'm not going to be using that. Um, oh, but this is my bib. I'm 52. It's a smaller race, clearly, because also too, Ming isn't just a, isn't a populated place like that. Um, I don't know what this is. I might want to look into this though. So that's another thing I got. Oh, and another thing I got. Oh, yeah, we're going to take advantage of this tomorrow. We're going to take full advantage of this tomorrow. Um, so, yeah. Got my got my thing for the park. So I can go through the park. Um, so that's dope. So, yeah. So if you haven't figured out what I'm going to be ending up doing tomorrow after the race... I am going to try to do a little bit of the Arcadia stuff. Not too much, though. Um, I do have to head out from Arcadia um, to Portland. <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit of a hike, but I don't want to not use this. And I don't want to, like, because once I'm in Portland, I'm staying put. I'm not going anywhere, like, far away from Portland after that. So we're going to use this tomorrow. And we're going to try to stay, we're going to try to do most of the stuff. Um, so basically, what's going to end up happening, and I'm kind of deciding this a little bit on the fly right now, is we're going to do the race. Um, the I should be done with the race, ideally, around like 9.30 in the morning. And then I'm going to probably actually come back to the Airbnb get my things, get cleaned up, still wear hiking stuff, but I'm just going to switch to hiking stuff and then go back to Arcadia and then take full advantage of this. 
And then I'll probably end up even also having lunch over in that area, Bar Harbor, because I have a couple of restaurants. I already had a list of places that I will go over there. And then once I eat lunch and get done really hiking, and it's going to be a later lunch. It's going to be probably around 1 or 2 central time when I have the lunch. Um, So it'll be like 2 or 3 when I decide I'm going to have the lunch. It's going to be a late lunch. And then from there, I'm going to then head over and get to Portland, get to Airbnb, then get to Portland. And then um, I already have the restaurants chosen of ideas and places I want to go. I'm actually probably going back to some places I went last time because um, they were really, really good. <laughs> like, just similar to like how I end up going to the same place I went to on day one of the trip last time, and it didn't disappoint. I feel that way about all the other places, too. So anyway... So there's going to be a lot of walking around and I'm doing a half marathon too. So even today I was kind of annoyed that I only got a mile and a half like hike in and that's all I did. I did not run and didn't get to run at all yesterday. And I was kind of like mad at myself for that. But at the same time, I'm like, girl, you do realize you're going to be running a half marathon and nine times out of 10, because I forgot that the half part of the reason why I'm doing this half marathon is part of the entry fee is paying for the parking pass so that you could like do stuff in Arcadia a National Park. So I'm gonna be hiking all all day anyway. So it's like after I run, I'm just gonna get cleaned up first and then do it. Um and then get to the Airbnb, get cleaned up yet again. Cause yeah. Cause also too, probably in between there, I do need to buy some bug spray. I'm actually probably going to buy the bug spray tonight before I, you know, call the day or call the evening. Um, I already have my race stuff ready to go already out. So I already know I'm doing when it comes to that. But yeah, that's kind of the plan. And then I have a couple ideas of what I could wear. But yeah, I'm ready to go. (laughs) It's going to be a whole thing. But anyway, so that's kind of all I got for today. I mean, at least for most of today. I'm going to get dinner. You'll see pictures of that probably. And I'll see you tomorrow morning.
Hello. So I know y'all are sick of seeing me like in my like bonnet or whatever, but whatever, deal with it. Um, so I'm in my new Airbnb. I'm actually in Portland, Maine now. And um, oh, by the way, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we're back for another um seeing things differently. And yeah. So we're be we're in Portland, Maine now. I just got here, oh, probably about three hours or four hours ago. Um, had dinner. These are pictures you're about to see, or pictures of dinner. Um, also, I witnessed a marriage proposal towards the end. Also, I got cat called on the way to my um rental car. Fortunately, my rental car was not parked on the same street where the cat calling was happening, so I dashed. <laughs> per usual. Like, uh, it's like, I get this in the city. I don't want to get it here. And of course, yeah, I got it immediately. Like, it was like, welcome to Portland. You're getting cat called. I'm like, what? And it was kind of like, it was nasty. It wasn't like, hey, 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 or anything like that. It was like, baby, baby. And in the words of, in the words of Jan Jackson... I'm I'm not your baby. And also in the words of Meg the Stallion, you ain't my daddy, I'm not your baby. Okay? Don't call me baby. I don't know you, don't do that. It's so disrespectful, it's so derogatory, it's disgusting. And yeah, of course I was wearing something nice. Um, because I went to a nice restaurant. Duh. <laughs> um, and you can see by the food, the food was banging. Um, but from Wow, that's almost no pun intended. It actually is no pun intended, but let me rewind that. So let me tell you about how today went. So I ran the half marathon. I had so much fun. I did not run it for time. I knew I wasn't going to be running it for time. I actually decided to switch focus and let me get myself together. Hold on, hold on. Two pictures of what... So I met, I met a couple of people at the half, um, a couple, and... Yeah, I ended up hanging out with them later on during the day and stuff. So it was cool. Um, and that's actually one of the things I like about solo trips. And that's why I do solo trips is because I feel like if it's just me, I actually get to meet people, mingle, and I end up like hanging out with them and stuff. I feel like if I have a plus one, um, particularly if it's like a significant other, based off my dating history, I'm not going to get approached. Because the people who I usually typically date or have dated in the past are very introverted and overly awkward and not approachable. And I'm opposite. I'm not really extroverted though either. I'm more of an introvert extrovert, but I come off as like an extrovert like when I'm out and about. Um, clearly I have moments where I just like don't go out and about. I, so I, my social batteries have been battering lately, honestly, because I'm like, on vacation so I'm out all the time but after this I'm gonna need a vacation from vacation which is why I have two days off <laughs> after the vacation because I'm gonna just not be around um I'm gonna hold you I'll probably just like run get my workouts in get caught up on that but not be around for real that's just me keeping it real but also too okay so about the half I ran it um as a training run and I kind of wanted to test how it feels to have a lot of time on my feet. So I ran my slowest half marathon I've ever ran, but it was on purpose. So it took three hours and some change to do it. And normally, if, I mean, and honestly, the ba based off of how this, um, the course and stuff was, I could have ran it in 2.30. Um, I know it wouldn't be faster than that at this moment just because my fitness isn't there. But I could have ran it 240. I could have ran it under three. Like, I know that. Um, but I was running with someone who he always runs by himself. And he was even talking. And this is a person who I ended up hanging out with, with his wife. But his wife's much faster than him. Um, because, you know, health complications or whatever. He had open heart surgery. So his heart rate can only go up to a certain amount. So it stops him from running any faster than he wants to type thing. Um, so... Basically, I'm running with him the whole time. I committed to it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to run with you the whole entire time. And so I did. I started with them and finished with them. And I ain't going to hold you. 
it made the half marathon go by so fast, even though it was out there the longest. Because I literally was talking to someone the whole entire time. It literally, for me, I treat it as like a serious glorified training run. And also, too, again, I wanted to find out, can I handle just being on my feet for three hours? Because um, I've only did a 17-miler one time. And I next weekend, I will probably do either 20 or 26. I'm, I'm debating which one I'm going to sign up for because I have a race I could sign up for to get the 26 in, or I could just sign up for one of the 20 milers so that I get that in my system. That's the last time. And after that, then it's um, tapering till I do the 50 K. Yeah, it's, it, it came and it came so quickly. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to be a thing, but it literally came so quickly. Um, but anyway, yeah, I did all right. Um, very scenic, very beautiful. You'll see the pictures and videos I took now. And from there, I went back home. Well, not home, but back to the Airbnb I was staying at. Which, by the way, I never did show you that Airbnb, which I'm kind of okay with just because I don't know how. I try to not do that, to be honest, because I don't know how the Airbnb people feel about it. Like the, the host, I think it depends on the host if that's okay or not. And so I just didn't want to chance it. So I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. But anyway, so, and then from there, this is the lunch I had. It's very, very good. Um, I stopped at Bar Harbor Lobster Company. I also had um, a beer, um, the fall seasonal beer from Atlantic um, Brewing Company, um, which is a, a Bar Harbor like brewery. It was all right. Um, it wasn't my favorite, so I decided not to get, bring any of that back. Um, it got the job done. I just wanted something with my lunch. Um, and then from there, I end up meeting up with the couple. And we, the place that I went to, I'm going to show you here. It's normally underwater, but we were at the low tide part of the day. So in the low tide part of the day, you could actually walk on it and stuff. But like during high tide, that's underwater. So that was cool. I also got to see some snails. Um, I did not see any starfish. The starfish, there's another place that's similar to that where you go there on low tide, you're good, but you gotta be careful type thing. And I just was too tired to do both. And, um, the guy who I was running with, he was just like, yeah, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. I was like, I'm tired. And honestly, once we got back to their bed and breakfast, he was like, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> and the funny thing is they took the nap. I didn't. And I was like, I still got to drive to Portland. And for those who are not familiar with geography, it's about three hours away um, from where I was at in Bar Harbor to Portland. Um... And so anyway, that's that on that. And then from there, I know I told this in weird order. I ended up at this restaurant. It's called um, David's, David's 833. There's three locations in the Portland, Main area. And I had the best food. The best food. And particularly the thing that I had there... Because, okay, side note, for those who haven't figured out, I've been trying to have lobster every single day, but a girl, I, I gotta take a break a little bit. My face will break out completely if I have lobster for every meal. And also, too, I need vegetables. This, like, Maine is the only time where I don't eat a ton of vegetables. Like, th this is the only time. Because I just go all in on the on the lobster for the most part. And I was like, I need a break. So I had a salad at this place, a Caesar salad, and they put the anchovies on the Caesar salad. Thank you very much. Um, and then they had, they came with bread, had a, a glass and a half of um, a white wine, and then the Bang Island, the Bangs Island, um, the Bangs Island um, mussels. Those muscles were the best, best muscles I have ever had. And me ever had. They were so good. I ate it up. 
and tore it up. And then as I'm still just like howling down stuff, I hear everyone go, woo! And then I, and I'm like, what is happening? Like, I jumped. But then I looked, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a marriage proposal happening right there. So I was like at a table, I was like right there. I was like, oh. And so I saw a marriage proposal. I had never seen one in person. So I was like, oh my God. And so we were all like, yay, and cheered them on and stuff. And then that was on that. And then that's when I got the cat call thing. And I was like, oh, child. But anyway, now I'm back at this Airbnb. And this Airbnb is really, really nice. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like there's a couple things that happened during the half. Or while in Bar Harbor that I don't completely remember. Oh, oh. So the couple I was hanging out with, a couple things. I they they go to Bar Harbor a lot. So it was nice hanging out with them because they were giving me pointers of things and stuff to do for next time. And like the bike rentals and whatnot. So I was like, okay, 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 good to know. Cool, cool, cool. Um, the other thing that was cool and really dope was so there was this lady who lives on the island. Well, yeah, it's an island. Who lives in Bar Harbor and stuff um, during the summer months. So six months out of the year or whatever. And the other six months she was in Miami. I was like, oh, this this chick is bougie. Because <laughs> I, I ran to her yesterday while I was having my nice lunch at like that terrace place. And I ran to her again today. And I was like, oh, so you just go to all the bougie places. She's like, yeah. If you're at the restaurant, you you're you're at a nice restaurant. If you see me, you're at a nice restaurant. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, say less. Say less, friend. So that was cool. But you could tell, by the way, that she was a New Englander. Because, oh my gosh. Women, especially the women around here. That New England accent be thick. So, she's like, you know, on her bougie but she's New England as hell. <laughs> so, that was cool. Um, the other thing... Because she's really social. This lady's a social lady. So I talked to her a little bit while I was at the other restaurant. And then I talked to her again today. And then I had something strange happen during the half marathon. And I want to know your opinion. Because I do feel a way about it. Um, I kind of brushed it off a little bit. But I was annoyed for so many reasons when it came to this thing. Let me Let's talk about it. Okay. So this was a very small half marathon. I probably should have started off with that. And so the roads were not closed um, when it comes to certain parts of it. But it was early enough in the morning where there really wasn't much traffic, so it wasn't a big deal. And then most of the race is in Arcadia, and it's in the parts where cars are, are not a part, aren't you know, aren't allowed to go on the parts. So you really only the car the cars are really only issue, um, like a little bit at the beginning, but not bad. Because they had police supervision and stuff there. And at the end, it was a little ridiculous. But that's neither here nor there. I'm not going to get into that. That's just that's just something that, I don't know. I'm going to mention it probably in the email and give them feedback about that. But anyway. So we're running. And also, too, the race directors and stuff, because this is a small race. I've been doing this for 25 years. It is, it's a long-standing small race. And she made it very, they made it very clear. The roads are not going to be closed. So you need to run on the side of the road if possible, which most of us were doing except for this one lady. And so as this car was coming, I'm literally screaming at her. And this is like less, I would say we're a quarter mile, not even a mile yet. And I'm yelling at her like, Hey, cause she's in the middle of the road. And I get why, because part of the roads, they are traditional old school New England type roads where they're uneven roads. So they're high up here and then they slope on the sides, which is horrible for running, by the way. My knee, my left side and stuff was bothering me towards the end because of that. But I kind of figured it out towards the end that that's what it was. I thought it was just my shoes and whatever and everything. And I was kind of concerned because my left side is the one that's the problem side in general including where the injury came from. But anyway, so we finally get her to move. She does move. And then I'm going back to talking to the person I'm talking to. So I'm still talking to, you know, the person I was hanging And I ended up hanging out with and stuff. We were getting chummy, hanging out and talking the whole entire time. And like, it, we were just like, like talking. It was like that type situation. And then so out of nowhere, 
And there's a couple other people who did it, but wasn't it was respectable. So for those who don't know, I always wear Chicago stuff when I'm out of town. I got rep from I got rep for the city. Um, so I had the Chicago flat. I had my Chicago flan like um, um, buff on because I use that whenever I have these type of situations. I I put that on there along with you know putting my hair in a ponytail just so that the ponytail won't come loose and I don't have the issues where things moving around too much. It's just an extra layer of protection, if you will. Um, anyway. So, I have this on. The other people did the normal thing, like, oh, you're from Chicago, nice, and then they keep it pushing. She, and the thing is, the other people did it while wasn't, like, we, while, me and the other person weren't talking to each other. It wasn't an interruption, for real, for real. This chick straight up interrupted while he was in the middle of a sentence and everything. She's like, oh my gosh, you're from Chicago, so am I. And so, side note, <laughs> I never thought I would, it would be, there would be a day where I would get annoyed by people who say they're from Chicago, but they're not. I'm so annoyed when people do this. <laughs> I used to not be, but the older I get, the more irritated I get. Because then they're always like, yeah, I'm from Chicago. I'm from Gertie. And this is where this lady was originally from. I was like, girl, that's not Chicago. It's not even anywhere near Chicago. You know, it's like, it's Chicago land. It's not Chicago. So I'm like, oh my God. Anyway, so she interrupted me to say all that. And then out of nowhere, she's like, yeah. So I'm voting for Kamala. Are you voting for Kamala? And I'm just like... That's strange. Oh, also, by the way, she's like, yeah, but now I'm in San Diego now. So I traveled a little bit further. I was like, okay. And I was just confused. And I, the thing is, I'm pretty sure my face said it all. Because I don't know how to fix my face to save the day. But I was trying to be polite and respectful at the same time. But I was just kind of looking at her like, girl, why would you interrupt me to tell me this? And this is the same, again, same lady who's blocked the traffic just being just, I'm just the self-awareness is lacking. And then she talks, then she started talking to me about like, yeah, I'm voting for Obama, like, I'm not Obama, wow. I'm voting for Kamala, for Kamala, are you? And I'm like, yeah, but I really don't want to talk about politics when I'm running a half marathon. And she's like, oh, no, no, I'm just proud. I'm proud to say it, da, 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 I was like. So, the nuance that I felt a way about is, number one, let's state the obvious. Is it because I'm black you assume I'm voting for someone? I mean, clearly, yeah, I am because, I mean, child, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, it kind of is not your business, number one, because I don't know you like that. And number two... I'm in a very predominantly white area where, and this is a state that is truly purple. And there's probably some people that are here that came from rural areas. So guess what? They're, they're not voting for Kamala. Hello. You know, and also too, I just met the person I'm talking to and they're not from Maine. I don't know what their political affiliations are. And honestly, and this might, this might come off weird or whatever, and normally I wouldn't be this way, but like, during a race, especially a distance race, what I don't want is to have high blood pressure for freaking no reason. And guess what? Politics is going to be something that, bo that boils my blood, just because it's just, you know, it's loaded. It's a loaded thing, particularly the climate we're in now. You know, I feel like that's like, goes without being said, right? Number two, I'm a black woman in a predominantly white area, and I don't, re I don't know anyone here. For all I know is you could be setting me up for the okie doke so I can get jumped or something. Hello? It's kind of a safety issue to a certain extent to talk. You know, when you're somewhere that you're not familiar with talking politics, it's already kind of an interesting issue to be somewhere where you're kind of the only one anyway. And I'm very mindful of that and very aware. So, yeah, I like coming to Maine, but, like, 
the thing that stops me from loving coming to Ming is, uh, hello, it's the obvious. I literally stick out like a sore thumb. It's like, I, don't, I know I'm not, from, it's, it's giving I'm not from here. <laughs> I, it doesn't, it's not that hard for that to be obvious. You know, not just the accent. It's just literally an obvious thing. Especially once you're no longer in like Portland or Mangor. Like the two like basically bluer places. So, and even like the people who, like even in Portland, I would say so far, my experiences when I was here last time, most of the black people I saw are like African descent. Like they're not African, they're not, they're not, you know, they're not black people. They're not black Americans necessarily. Um, I'm sure there is, but I just haven't, I mean, I feel like in most cases, last time I was here, I mainly saw African people. Um, so yeah, the levels and all that is different. So I just felt away because I was like, did she just like profile me during a race? Like, why are you talking to me about, because I'll be honest, I feel like she would have never said that to me if I was like not black. I mean, I'm just going to call a thing a thing. Because it was given like, uh, I'm going to come out are you like, only thing was miss, missing, and also too, side note, this is an older lady too. But the only thing that seemed for me that was missing was, are you going to put in a black set now? Like, that was kind of just like, I was like, uh, what? And so, I think my face said it all and she just ran away. Because I was like, she's like, because I had nothing else to say to her. I was like, okay, go away. <laughs> and then the guy who I was running with was like, like, he he looked irritated too because he was like, "What the heck?" Because also she cut him off and just like started just talking about her own little thing or whatever. And then after she did that, she proceeded to start running back in the middle of the road again and blocking traffic. And he and I was like, "Oh my god, this lady is just clueless." And I just didn't like that. I didn't like that. Do not. I mean, child, the way I read that was like, you might as well say, N-word, are you voting for this person? Like, that. <laughs> is that bad that that's how I pictured that? Because I did. I was very offended. And I held it. I was like, you know what? I ain't going to go into it too much. I'm just going to be like, that was really, like, I left it surface, but... Later on during the run, though, the person I was running with, he was like, thank you for not wanting to talk politics. I was like, even though, funny thing it was, me and him did start talking politics, but that's because he's like a local politician from where he's from. And I, I find local politics very fascinating because you're, though you're not making, okay, side note, if y'all ain't educated on that, I, I can't do anything for you. But outside of, like, your major cities, local pol you do, that is a labor of love. Because you're not really getting paid. It is really, like, a service work. If you're doing, like, city council, mayor, you're working full-time hours, but you're getting paid, like, part-time money. Okay? If that. It is literally a service of love. So... I did end up talking to him about politics and stuff. Because also, too, I do have family members that have been in politics in the past. And then I also have classmates who have ran and, you know, stuff like that. At least from where I'm originally from, not not Chicago. Um, so we did end up actually talking about stuff later on. But, like, I didn't want to make it obvious. But I was just like... And also, too, I didn't know if he would relate to it or not. But he actually... But actually... More I got to know him, I was like, oh, no, he read me. He felt how I felt about it. So I didn't even have to tell him that that she knew what she was doing. I was messed up. But anyway, let me know if y'all think that I was reading too much into that. But I didn't think I was. I was like, did this bitch just try to profile? Did this bitch just profile me? And it ain't. Oh, this is a kicker, by the way. We're not even at mile one of this half marathon. This lady tried this. 
Yeah, the way I felt, I really just wanted to push her into a car for her to get ran over. <laughs> I was like, the gall. Because also, too, you know, I think <laughs> liberal people can be racist, too. How about that? I mean, I'm just going to say it. Like, if you, if you, like, just because you're a liberal Democrat don't mean you, you ain't, you ain't got no prejudice or racism on you. And to me, that was just, I don't know. I, I felt very offended by that whole entire interaction. And also, too, what if I don't, what if I'm someone who doesn't even vote? I mean, I'm not that, but it's just like, you don't know me. I literally just met you five seconds ago. I don't even know your name. And you're asking me who I'm voting for? Are you fucking kidding me? And sorry for me using the F-bomb. I would never, normally I wouldn't do this, but like, I didn't, I didn't want this to be a rant, but like, it's been my spirit. I've been thinking about it all day because it really did bother me. And the fact that I tabled it and not let her ruin my half marathon experience, I'm glad about that. But I still felt a way and I had to get that off my, I had to get that out. Like, it can't stay here. I have to leave. So this is me doing that, is leaving now. And then after that, I'll probably talk to my friends about it a couple times just because I feel a way about it still a little bit. But then after that, I'm moving on. But, like, I, I'm just that way. I have to vent and then I'm okay. But, child, that was the only thing that was kind of like, ugh, when it came to the half. Other than a car trying to run me down, but, like, unfortunately... I live in Chicago, so I mean, it's a thing. <laughs> and also, too, I've been running for a long time. And you're not the first car, and, and I'm sure you won't be the last, unfortunately. I just, when it comes to that, I always say, be lucky you didn't meet me while I was in my 20s. 20-something, Sharon, when that was a thing, there's a couple times I'm not proud about it, but I'm just saying what it is. When a car has almost ran me over... Once they stopped, I kicked the ish out of their car, made sure there was a dent, and took off and ran. <laughs> and I was like, catch me if you can, because you can't. Bye. Like, and zigzag, and I was gone. Yeah. Younger me had a mean streak, and I'm glad that they don't, they don't know her anymore. I'm glad she's gone. I'm glad, you know, she's evolved. But man, be lucky. And also, too, at the same time, I wouldn't do that in today's date because people are crazy. But anyway, which is why, to circle it back to the original point and the other thing, that's why I was irritated also that she even mentioned this, like, in the middle of a race where there's other people around. And people travel. I mean, hello. A lot of people travel. So people travel for half marathons all the time from other states. So I don't want to talk about my political affiliation when I'm already sticking out as a storm thumb as a black person running the race. I was literally, there's only two of us that ran the race are black. I was surprised to see the other. Honestly. It's so like, I'm just like, ugh, it was annoying. But anyway. I got that out of the way. I just had to rant a little bit. But that is kind of the only thing that happened that was really annoying about this half marathon. I'm trying to think, was there something else that happened? Um, oh, there was watermelon. And, oh, yeah, there was watermelon on the course. And then towards the end of the course, well, after, after the course was over with, um, they gave away ice cream. And normally, I'm not an ice cream person. Normally, I'm like, ill. And also, too, I kind of did pay for it later. I'm, I've been paying for it because I am not okay um, when it comes to that because I forgot to bring my, my lactate. But anyway, um, I know it was TMI a little bit, but it is what it is. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, sh they had coffee ice cream. And that coffee ice cream was good. So we had it. But anyway, um, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else. I'm pretty sure I'm missing something. But, um, 
Yeah, I think that's it, though. Anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything on the content. I, again, I apologize for not being on camera. I was going to be on camera and just decided I can't be on camera. Because I look crazy. Um, I'm going to let you see a little bit at the beginning. Well, I'm going to let you see. Well, you can see right now real quick. I'll just briefly let you see what I look like right now. See? I look rough. We're going to go. <laughs> no, I'm not going to let you see me. Anyway, I'm probably going to cut this part out too. But anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything on the content. It's your girl Sharon, a.k.a. Mel Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.